Hi guys and welcome or welcome back to the Bluefin Fishing Team How To Series. My name is Kevin and I'm the Allocraft Brand Ambassador for 2023 and 2024 and today I'm going to show you guys how to change a bearing on a non-braked trailer. Tools you're going to need are a grease gun loaded with lithium based marine grease, a bearing installation kit, a piece of tubing that fits over the flange of the dust cap, shifter spanner, side cutters, breaker bar with extension with either a 3 quarter or 3 16 socket or a wheel brace, flathead screwdriver, pin punch or drift, a hammer, bearing packer and lastly which is not pictured a jack. Firstly position the jack in behind the wheel, choose a section of the trailer that will support the weight and will not slip off. Jack a couple of times until the jack touches the trailer but doesn't lift the wheel off the ground. Now it's time to loosen the wheel nuts. It's good practice to work the opposite nut to the previous one when tightening or loosening. Go ahead and jack the wheel completely off the ground. From this point you can remove all the wheel nuts entirely. Make sure you put them aside all together so you know where they are for when you want to put them back on later on. Remove the wheel and set it aside. To remove the dust cap, firstly give it a knock on the side, then stick your flathead screwdriver inside, give it another knock, spin it around, do the same on the other side and it should pop straight off. What you're looking at here is a castellated nut with a split pin. Using your side cutters, bend back the split pin and remove from the castellated nut. It is much easier to do this using a set of side cutters than what it would be to do it with a set of pliers. Now that the split pin has been removed, it's time to remove the castellated nut using your shifting spanner. The reason it's called a castellated nut is because as you'll see on the top of it, it has a lot of grooves, which when laid down looks like a castle. You can now remove the wheel hub. Make sure that you put the washer with the castellated nut nicely aside so you can find it for later. Remove the rubber seal and clean off all grease and debris. Inspect the axle for any rust or wear and tear. While the wheel and hub is off, this is a great opportunity to check out your leaf springs to make sure everything is in fine working order. Now it's time to remove the sleeve from the rubber seal the bearings and the cups. Using your hammer and punch, go ahead and remove the bearing, the cup and the sleeve. Making sure that you knock it evenly from left to right so it comes out straight. Be careful not to hit your hands with the hammer. Now flip it over and do the same on the other side. Remember, watch those hands. A great little tip instead of having to hold the actual hub if you find that a bit awkward is to reinstall it back into that wheel you took off put the nuts back on and that way you keep your hands out of the way you're not knocking them it's off the ground high enough that you can knock those bearings off with uh, without an issue 
On some types of hubs, they have little grooves to knock the sleeves out. Uh, this one here is actually quite good because as you can see, you've got area that you can actually knock that sleeve out the whole way around and uh, make it nice and easy for yourself. Make sure that you do it evenly from left to right and side to side so it comes out straight. Okay, let's lay the bearings out ready for packing. You'll have to check with your manufacturer what bearings you require depending on the type of axle and hub system that you have. Most common are Holden and Ford. Wipe clean your bearing packer to make sure there's no old grease or debris left that will end up inside your bearings. It's a good idea to wear gloves for the packing of the bearings because you are going to get greasy. Now take the bearing out of the cup and place it on the bearing packer with the skinnier side facing up. Insert the top of the bearing packer and screw it on in place. Grab your grease gun and attach it to the top of the grease nipple on the bearing packer. Keep pumping until you can see the grease coming through the sides of the bearing. If you can't see the grease coming through the sides of the bearing yet, just keep on pumping. Place the bearing aside and repeat the exact same process for the other bearing. Small side facing up, place the top of the bearing packer on top, screw it in place and attach the grease nipple and pump away again. As you can see, the lithium grease has worked its way through the bearing. Now it's time to install the bearings, cup and sleeve back into the hub. Now we've given the hub a good wipe out, so make sure you do the same, so no old grease or residue is left around the hub. Place the bearing cup on top of the hub and position properly. Then grab your bearing installer, sit it on top, Give it a quick knock with the hammer just to get it started and make sure it's sitting flush, then knock it into place. Once that bearing cup is in place, do the same to the opposite side. Place the bearing on the hub, grab the bearing installer, place it on top, knock it in place. Place some fresh grease in and around that bearing cup. You can be quite generous with the grease as anything that is not used will use later. As your wheels are getting submerged in water, especially it could be salt water, this is a great idea to pack as much grease in as possible so that the water can't get in if there is any break in the seal. Grab the rear bearing and place it into the greased area. Push it down and wipe the grease around, 
so it has a good seal. Now install the sleeve for the rubber seal. Same as the bearing cup, place it on top of the hub, get your bearing installer and knock it into place. Use some of the grease to wipe it around the edge of the sleeve to make another seal. Now we're going to head out to the axle and install the rubber seal. Once the rubber seal has been installed, you can get your hub with the new bearings packed full of grease and slide it back over again. Next, get that packed bearing and place it in the front of the hub. You will find you'll have excess grease on the front of your axle. Take that grease and pack it into your dust cover. The reason we pack the dust cover full of grease is to keep any water from protruding into the bearings. Reinstall the washer and the castellated nut. Tighten the castellated nut till it is firm. Once you have done that, you are going to back it off one of the grooves. What we are looking for is that the hub doesn't have any sideways movement, but will still spin freely. If you find the hub has sideways movement, tighten it one more notch and see how it goes again. Grab your split pin and slide it back through the hole in the castellated nut through the axle. Grab your side cutters and knock that split pin through. Bend over one side of the split pin and cut off the other. Do a final check before you put the wheel back on to make sure it spins well and has no sideways movement. Go grab the wheel and place it back on the threads on the hub. Hopefully you've put those wheel nuts in a safe place, it's now time to thread them back onto the hub. On this particular trailer we need to remove the wheel cap. As mentioned earlier, make sure that you tighten on the opposite wheel nut to the one that you've just completed. We're nearly all done, now we just need to install that dust cover. Grab that bit of tubing, insert the dust cover and knock it on with a hammer. Drop the jack right down and pull out. And tighten up those tire nuts. And there we are, we're all done. So there we go, we've uh, changed the bearing on the wheel now. 
Uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this. Uh, if you haven't already, please uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video and share it around. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of this stuff over the next year or so, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.